So you have a stranded copper wire that was cut extremely short on an electrical device inside an electrical panel on a light fixture or wiring harness in your car or boat and it's a little too short to be using a wire nut or a butt splice connector, the one you crimp just like you see right here. And you also don't want to just hold the wire very close and solder the two together without having a good mechanical connection first. In this video, I'm going to show you an extremely useful and very good technique that I've been using for many years with no problems at all. Keep in mind, to have great results, you must do everything properly. The method you'll see can be finished off using glue-lined heat shrink or electrical tape, or be soldered together and covered with heat shrink tubing for the best possible connection. When done properly, the spliced area will be around the same size or slightly smaller than the outside diameter of the wire. Right here you can see there's about 3 eighths of an inch or 10 millimeters of the wire sticking out of this photo cell. So what I need to do is trim off about a quarter of an inch or 5 sixteenths of this insulation. The easiest way to do this, I'm going to be taking a single edge razor blade and just making a groove all the way around this wire. And once that's done, I'm going to take these flush cutters and get right into that groove and just very gently pull off that insulation. Once the wire is stripped, you want to make sure that the copper is very shiny. If it's not bright and shiny, take a razor blade like you see here and just very gently scrape over it. Any oxidation that's on there will come off and you can see it's getting a very nice color. Just go all the way around that wire. You want to have a nice surface there for the repair. Okay, so this right here is ready to go. The next thing you want to do is find a wire that's very close in size, and then you're going to strip off about 5 sixteenths of an inch. This wire here is a tinned copper wire. It does not have to be tinned, it's just what I had laying around. The next thing you want to do is place the two wires side by side. In addition to these flush cutters that you see right here, you're also going to need 26 to 28 gauge bus wire. Now bus wire is nothing more than solid copper wire, but this one here is tinned, just like this wire right over here. It doesn't have to be tinned, but that's the way I got it, and it's fairly inexpensive. You can also find this wire at a craft store such as Joann Fabrics or Michaels. You go into the section where they have beads, and you're going to see this kind of wire, copper, that's tinned. You're going to remove one foot. Right here's a look at the wire. You want to make sure it's between 26 and 28 gauge. If you use a wire that's too thin, what's going to happen, it's not going to give you a very strong connection between the two wires. And if you use one that's too thick, it's not going to let you form around these wires properly and get a nice tight connection. So make sure it stays between 26 and 28 gauge. Now with the first thing I normally do is I make a loop, just a simple loop right here. All right, keep it towards the middle. And you're going to place both of these wires tied up against each other side by side. And you're going to center the loop directly over the connection between the two wires. So right in the center of these two wires, you're going to slide this over and pull very tight. Okay, so I got the one loop on there. And with that loop now, all I have to do is just hold either this piece here or hold this wire. And I'm gonna take this wire here. I'm gonna wrap it around both of these wires, three turns, pulling very tight on each turn. This wire here is going to be turned the opposite direction, going under from this side, and over to here, I'm going to wrap three tight turns here, squeezing the two wires together very tightly. Let me do that, and I'll come right back. Normally, when you have one wire cut very short, one side is going to be supported, making it easier for you to perform this wrap. Right here, you can see there's about three wraps on this side. The wire is going over the top from the camera side, towards this direction, and over here there's three wraps, and the wire's going from underneath this side and over the top towards the camera. When you wrap this, you wanna use needle nose and just give it a really good pull 
on each wrap. You want to squeeze the two wires together so you crush each one of those stranded conductors making it very hard to pull apart. Now right here I would normally take my flush cutters I would cut this off right here this wire cut that one off and I'd apply one drop of flux solder this and then slide the heat shrink over and have a perfect connection but some people do not want to solder so you can actually use this the way it is but what you need to do is wrap this wire back about two turns this way wrap this one about two turns towards the middle and then you're going to get both of these wires and you're going to twist them together using a pair of pliers as you twist it's going to pull everything really really tight in the center and then when you're done it's going to look like what you see right over here leave a little piece sticking up and then you're going to flatten it down and then you can slide your heat shrink with glue over the area that connection is going to be extremely strong because the wires are tight against each other and you also have the surface area of the wire that's going to be conducting electricity making a good connection all the way along the outside through the use of this 26 gauge tinned copper wire. Just to show you that the connection is pretty strong if you just wrap it and twist it. I have this scale connected. It's going to be measuring pounds. I'm going to be pulling at this end and holding this end. Wow, over 10 pounds and it hasn't separated yet. As you just saw, I applied 10 pounds of force to this connection, and it's exactly the way it was. So not a problem at all, just by twisting the ends together, folding it over, and putting on some heat shrink with glue. I'm going to take this one right over here and snip it off. Just a drop or two of the liquid rosin flux. And right here you can see how beautifully that's soldered together in a straight line. Now I'm just going to slide the heat shrink over. And right there you have an excellent connection that you will never have to worry about. And you can see the diameter is just about the same as the wire. Over here is the exact same process for splicing together two wires. Sometimes you may have to do a tap splice and right here you can see how easy it is to do. Cut a 5 8 inch section away of the insulation. Take the wire you want to tap in with and you're going to cut off 3 quarters of an inch of the insulation on the end. You're going to wrap the two wires together. And you know if you've ever done this that if you just wrap the wires together and you even try slightly pulling on it, it'll loosen up very easily. If you put electrical tape, it can also loosen. So when you wrap everything with that 26 gauge bus wire, make sure it's extremely tight. Then you can lock it as shown earlier. Then just put some liquid electrical tape or electrical tape over this connection and you're good to go. And that's it guys. Hopefully this tip can help you out in the future. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.